Hey, what is going on guys? It's Smokey here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 things that I wish I knew before I started playing Two Point Hospital. Let's get into it. So the very first thing I wish I knew before I started playing was about Kudosh. Kudosh is the in-game currency of Two Point Hospital. And I used to think that you were going to have to buy it like in Grand Theft Auto, buying money or uh, like buying gems on Clash Royale or something. Uh, I didn't think you'd be able to get it. You'd be able to earn it. But there's actually multiple ways you can earn it. Um, if you go to your career tab on the main page here, it's in the bottom left, you can see. Uh, you get challenges that will give you kudos for completing them. Take a look and see what challenges you have and what ones you can redeem. Um, and spend the kudos on, on items throughout the game, like those medicine cabinets, like the, you know, those boosters, or if you like the way um, something looks, buy it. Don't be afraid to spend your kudos. You, you earn more than you'll ever need to use. So the second thing that I wish I knew was the prices tab. Coming over to the dollar sign here in the menu, going into prices, I wish I knew to set everything at plus 20% with the exception of the GP's office. You want to go to minus 60% or minus whatever you want. I just use 60%. Um, that way people get really happy when they go into the GP's office and they don't become incredibly unhappy by going to uh, other areas and that way you can get tons of money flowing in and out throughout your hospital so tip number three is going to be about the diagnosis rooms um so if you take a look at some of my other videos i made a video on all the nurse and doctor run diagnosis rooms and and their purposes these rooms here are the nurse run diagnosis so you got the cardiology the easy scan and the fluid analysis generally speaking you want to stay away from these rooms they're not nearly as efficient as the doctor run rooms um they are cheaper and they definitely do have their place early on in the levels but um for the most part you want to stay away from them Spend the money, get the better diagnosis rooms, plus these rooms charge a lot more money than these rooms charge. So if you want to make the money, you'll stick with the doctor on diagnosis rooms. Number four is going to have to be don't spend your money hiring highly trained staff. So what I mean by that is if you go into the hire tab and here we're looking at hiring a nurse. So this is a good example here a chief nurse is going to cost you 30 37 thousand dollars a year and this nurse here has has uh skills that we would never use together so injection room and pharmacy is good together but diagnosing you don't want your treatment doctors to have diagnosing bedside manner is just a, a wash it's whatever but you're going to pay an eight thousand dollar recruitment fee plus you're going to be paying thirty-seven thousand dollars a year for this doc or for this nurse, and you can't change skills it has. Go ahead and hire yourself a cheaper nurse that you can mold into the one you want. So this one here, you know, doesn't have any skills, but you can right away train them into the treatment area or ward area if you want that. Or you could go here, an even cheaper option. Already has. Oh, he'll work for peanuts. You know, these are the people that you want. You can mold them into what you need for your hospital. Rather than hiring expensive nurses right out of the gate, you can hire student ones and train them into what you need them. Number five, trying to use as many maintenance-free items as possible to make your hospital um, whether you're doing heating, cooling, or trying to make it beautiful, you need to do your best to use maintenance-free items. So you don't have to have a large maintenance staff. 
running around like watering plants and stuff you want to use spend the kudosh and get things that don't require maintenance so such as ornaments and statues make your hospital beautiful without needing maintenance and heating and cooling um, heating's not really an issue but if you're doing cooling um, the ice sculpture does not ever need maintenance so air conditioning units uh, they will actually break down and they will cool um, less effectively and after every earthquake and over time they need constant upkeep so stay away from them number six don't be afraid to send people home if you're not ready to cure or diagnose them don't rush into building a room just because somebody says I need help so this guy here right he we're 82 percent of the di uh, the diagnosis and they want us to build another room so you have three options you can get the patient to wait spend the money to get another diagnosis room you can send the patient home or send them for treatment anyway so 82 percent we're going to send them for treatment however if you are not ready to build the room and people are or it comes up and says hey we need a um, recovery room just send the patient home if you're not ready don't spend all that money for a one-off patient to be treated there so number seven is going to be following proper building principles so if you go check out my channel I have tons of other videos on how to build these rooms but what I mean is I have a pretty cookie cutter um, formula for every single room that I build so once I build my room uh, I only build it once I take the time build it properly and then I will copy and I will place the rooms however many I need number eight is setting tasks for your staff so one thing that I wasn't very good at at the start of the game was figuring out so uh, a doctor would be running all over the building trying to do different things now I have teams of doctors I have my general practice doctors I have my treatment doctors and I have my diagnosing doctors so for example this doctor here doesn't matter what level he is but he so he has level two general practice I would not want him in any diagnosis room and I would not want him in any treatment room even though he is qualified to do so to do that you go on over to the jobs tab and you'll see here that all my general practice doctors here are allowed in one of 10 rooms, the general practice office. Whereas the tr uh, diagnosing doctor here, he is only allowed in the x-ray or meg, meg scan room because I don't want him running around. Uh, this is a good treatment doctor here. Uh, he is allowed in every room it, with the exception of the general practice x-ray and mega scan room I don't want him diagnosing and I don't want him in the general practice I want him treating people so number nine is playing the HR manager so this doctor here for example he's going to take a break so if you grab a hold of him you can actually see so he's pretty happy but he's got low energy so I find that my senior consultants, they take a heck of a lot of breaks. So sometimes what I do is I'll pick him up, put him in the staff room. If, let, let's say that I got a huge backlog of people. So what you can do is you can put him in the staff room where his stamina will climb, climb, climb for a little bit. Now you're ready to put him back into the general practice office where he can work. Whereas if you just let him go on his own, it would probably be four or five times the amount of time that it would have taken him. So don't be afraid to pick up your doctors if you see them walking around. And so he's on a break and on call. So stick him in the office where he will sit and return to work. Number 10 is the overview policy tab. So if you go... Over to the money tab, and the very first one is overview. The very first screen it'll pull up is, uh, it's a pretty useful screen. It's got your profit loss. It's whatever. You can go through that on your own. But where you want to go to is the policy. So when you first get into the screen, there's going to be different things checked off. So one thing I always do is I promote my staff automatically. Um, so I don't usually ever train my 
uh, receptionists than anything ever. Um, I may give them stamina, but I don't really care about them. They're so cheap that if they quit or they threaten to quit, I just fire them and then I can hire a new one. Um, and I don't ever train them above level three because it's just a waste of money. They don't do anything but check people in and it's fine. But uh, for doctors and janitors and stuff, once you stop training them, they will never get promoted beyond that until you get tr them trained. So uh, you don't have to train all of your doctors to level five. Um, that'll all depend on what stage of the hospital you're at. Um, and say with your maintenance guys, um, nurses. So yeah, but I just keep that checked. Um, I turn the staff training messages off because once you get so many people, it just, they keep coming on and on and on and it gets annoying. Staff leave room when idle. You want this checked. Um, that way, if there's nobody in the, uh, in line for the room, they will leave and they'll go do something else, like take a break, um, or, um, they'll go to a different room, especially that's important for your treatment doctors. So they're not staying in, um, the pans lab when they're needed in the deluxe clinic. Fast track decision process. Um, sometimes I have this checked. Sometimes I don't. Other levels, uh, I leave it checked. I have it checked here just because um, the hospital is pretty advanced and um, it's not. It. I have a lot of rooms. So what this does is it makes people go after they receive their diagnosis to a certain point. They can either go back to the general practice doctor to get the final sign off or they will just go right to the treatment room. So I have fast track checked right now. So that means after they reach a certain diagnosis threshold, which is right here, they will go right to treatment. Right now I have it set to 99%. So if they're not almost 100% certain, they're going back to the general practice doctor to get that final sign off. You can change this to whatever you want. On some of the levels, I run in around 80%. Um, other levels, I run 100%. Um, right now, I'm just running 99%. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up my top 10 list of what I wish I knew before I started playing Two Point Hospital. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, uh, drop a like on the video if you found any of these helpful. Uh, yeah, uh, follow me on Twitch, uh, Smokey, S M O K Y 780. Um, trying to stream every day. Um, make sure you're going over there and checking me out. If I'm uh, on live, drop in, say hi. Love to chat. Anyways, thanks. Bye, everyone.